are going live. If you get a question, if you would repeat the question, just so yeah. whoever told me. Okay. She's going to remind me when I forget. Yeah, we all forget. I'm like, yeah, I'll remember that, and I never remember. <laughs> Which camera am I talking to? So that's your main one. This and one. And then when you're working on the table, it'll be this one. Okay. Um, and you can see. I'll show you here. So that's your zoom. Oh, and that's just that. the side, but mainly it's the front. Okay. I got to get right. my the fat boy wrinkles in the back right there. <laughs> He's like. <laughs> All right, bit. everybody. Did we lose some? I think they're coming over there checking out. So we'll filter them in here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. Most of you were here the first time, so yeah. way to go. Everybody's sleepy. They had pizza. I know. You fed them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's always hard to follow lunch. Yeah. All right, we got Jim here. Jim and Leon have cocoon blanks. They make some of the coolest blanks you'll see. Uh, they do have some on display here. And if not, they can find you at cocoonblanks.com. Yep. And what's like Instagram? Uh, cocoon blanks. Cocoon blanks. Yep. Make it easy. Uh, Jim's going to show us how to do a segmented blank here. I'd say he's pretty darn good at it because uh, you've been demoing this for how many years now? <laughs> well, herringbones. It's the first herringbone demo, second herringbone demo I've done. Oh, Usually just cool. scallops, yeah. Well, we're really appreciative that you came over. Thanks for coming. Sure. Uh, as before, if anyone has questions, feel free to ask Jim. Online, Amy's moderating the chat, so she'll ask you questions there. Perfect. And we'll get started. Everybody, ready? Yep. Jim, 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 Jim. 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 Hey. Uh, let me start by saying thank you to my wife, who runs our business. Uh, Leon's a great partner. We do all the casting and, and segmenting and everything. But Jesse handles all the social media, the invoicing, the interactions. She does fantastic. So thank you to Jesse. Um, we are going to show you how to build a segmented blank today. We're going to go through the whole process with everything except cutting. So we didn't want to use power tools on camera. Um, it'd be a little loud and a little messy. So we're just going to stick to the process. Um, so typically, we're, I use a lot of resin. Alumilite Slow Clear is what we use for segmenting. Um, on occasion, we will use wood. Leon really mixes it up a lot. He'll do mixed media stuff. I just prefer to stick to, to resin when I'm doing my, uh, my segmenting. Um, today, we're going to build a blank that's going to look similar to this, which is a three-color blank, and it uses two different colors of styrene as the separators. We've got black and white there. Um, Typically, what I would tell you is to build a blank this size, it's going to fit a, like a pen that's a junior size pen. To get about a five inch blank, you need two full size blanks to start with. And you're going to cut them into uh, different size slices or segments. We'll start with this. This is about a quarter of an inch. Um, and you can see a little bit of the variation. This one's going to be a little bit bigger as far as the segments go. So they're spaced out a little bit more between the colors. Um, but I found about a quarter inch is a good size to, uh, for, for building a junior size kit or on a junior size kit. I want to cover some of the finer tips and tricks. It's the process itself for the glue up or the pattern, a herringbone pattern is very simple. You just kind of glue pieces together. But to get really nice, clean joints, there are some things that you have to be mindful of so you don't get gaps. Gaps are not good for you. You can see through and see the tube, or you have potential failure when you're turning it um, or even cutting it. And then we want to avoid that the best that we can. So what I would tell you is, if you can imagine starting with, let's say, three blanks, three full blanks, or if you pour your own and you have a big block, um, you'll want to clean up one side of it. So we typically cut on a table saw, more, more so than a bandsaw. My bandsaw is not great. Um, you get ridges on it, everything else. So um, we're going to cut different strips, as you can see. Leave it full length, just kind of like that. And I'll leave the tops. Leave them as big as you can leave them. Um, these are about an inch tall when we cut them. And I'm going to leave them that way through the glue up. So. My first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to rip these pieces individually. The second thing I'm going to do is run them through a drum sander. So I've got a, a mini, like a Jet 1020. It's a bench top sander. Uh, it works great. It goes down to an eighth of an inch if you need to go down that, that thin. But you want them flat on both sides. 
because you're gluing up multiple surfaces, you're not just gluing up one surface like you would with a scallop, right? So you want them perfectly flat on both sides. Um, and that's really gonna make a difference on how your glue up ends up. Okay, so if you can imagine that, they're going through. If you, I do wanna say, if you've got a good uh, finished blade, you may not need to run it through the sander if your table saw's tuned up real good and you can get them perfectly flat. It should work fine. Okay, so the glue up. I'll start with the white styrene. Um, the sequence of how you glue the styrene is completely up to you. You can use a single color, like you can see here, this has just white in it. And that looks fine with a dark color contrast. Um, we're gonna use two different colors because white on white doesn't really show much. So we're gonna alternate. We're gonna do the dark colors on white first. We're gonna do the white on black first and then we're gonna switch it up to do the stack. So I don't, Chad, I don't know if you wanna show it like a closer up of the glue up, yep. but what I'll tell you is I've seen people do glue ups and they've got squares and they've got squares of styrene and they're trying to glue little squares onto little squares. Just save yourself some time, glue up big pieces and then cut the, the squares after you're all glued up. We good? Yep, you're good. Oh, perfect. I'll just okay. zoom in on you a little more. So let's start with black on white first. You want to be sure that your pieces are free of dust. You'll see me do this a lot. And my, you can see that. I'm not kidding. I do it in the shop all the time. So we'll do that. Those are microfiber t-shirts. Right? Yes, they're microfiber t-shirts. Okay. Perfect. I'll show you about how much glue I use. Um, one thing I don't do, I, I don't wear gloves. You can wear gloves if you want to wear gloves. I found that when I wear gloves and I get glue or resin or whatever, and then I go to a pressure pot or I go to reach a tool, and I just spread it all over the shop. I'm, I'm terrible at it. So I usually try not to wear gloves. Um, but if you like gloves, feel free. And if you can see that, that's about as much glue as I'm going to use. Which kind of glue are you using? Uh, I usually use Mercury Flex. Today we're using BSI. Um, both work great. So what, medium. medium. Yeah, did I say Mercury Flex? Regular Mercury. I don't use Flex when I'm segmenting. Just regular Mercury. Mm -hmm. okay. So it's going to look like this. And then I'm just going to spread it. And you want to be sure it's nice and glossy everywhere. And you don't want so much glue it drips over and gets on your fingers because that's not going to be good. Like this one got on my finger a little bit. And when you press down, if you have glue on your fingers, you're going to put glue up here. And then you're going to have to resand again. So we don't want to do that. Just give it some pressure. You want to make sure you have good glue adhesion all the way through. If you have pockets where it doesn't really fit, you're going to hear it sometimes, like a little click. Um, and then you have more potential for failure when you're turning. I'm probably going to use more activator than anybody has ever seen anybody use. And that's fine. When you use activator, typically I won't spray it like this because the mist is going to get on my other parts, which is going to kick it off faster when I start building, and I don't want to do that. So I'll typically hold it away from the bench. And then sometimes I'll spray the whole thing and let it dry before I do the next glue up. That just helps it a little bit. Get that up push. Wipe that down. And we'll do the gray next. Then we'll get all the see that sorry honey she's just <laughs> making a mess on the shirts hopefully you can see the amount of glue that i'm using it's just a little little strip up and down and i don't know if you can see the shine or not but there's a couple flat spots where it just didn't quite get all the way on and we're gonna make sure we get on there Give that a good push. So, and this is where I, I was saying, the actual glue up, once the pieces are prepped and ready to go, we'll glue up the whole blank and get it trimmed up. It'll be 15 minutes, maybe. Um, it's all the, the sanding, um, getting stuff flat, the initial glue ups, the facing everything up, and then cutting the little squares. <laughs> it really takes the time. Okay, so we'll set that aside for a minute, let that dry, and we'll go to the black styrene. 
make sure it's clean. The other thing that I would point out is I'm uh, doing this on top of a very flat, clean surface. If you have a workbench that's got spilled epoxy or glue, you have little bumps, that's going to show up in your, um, on your styrene. It'll be little divots or whatever. Those do affect the, how well they seat on the seams. So I'm trying to use something that's as clean and as flat as possible that you're pressing down on. Do the same amount of glue. How thick is that styrene? Uh, how thick is the styrene we're using? So it, it varies, and I don't know. Uh, Leon knows though, because he's really good with the styrene stuff. Uh, o two O is our thinnest, and we go up to O four O. Okay, so he said O two O is our thinnest styrene, and we use styrene as thick as O four O. thousandths of an inch. Make sure that's good. Um, this next part, I'm just going to trim these out as close to the lengths as I can. I use a, a razor knife to do that. And we just want to separate them. We'll save this for later. And the reason I do this, you could glue, try and glue the whole sheet to like the, the next color, to the black styrene. But um, I've been challenged gluing pieces that, that big together without getting some kind of gap or separation. So I typically don't. Gonna get as close as we can. Here we go. Okay. It doesn't have to be perfect. Um, we just want to get it as close as we can before we glue up the black styrene. And then once we've got the two layers of styrene glued up. We'll take it to a table saw and we'll trim up the edges a little bit just so they're perfectly flat. That's really what we want to get to. Jim, you got a question. Where can That's, they get styrene? It's a great question. Chad, do you sell it? Okay, so um, we sell it on our website, but just black and white. I think that's all it comes in is black and white. Yeah, cocoonblanks.com. Uh, cocoon Amazon has it. You can find it sheets on Amazon as well. Um, there's other material you can use for the the uh, accents, so you don't have to use styrene. We just, I like it. It's easy to work with. It's easy to machine. It glues nicely. But you can use um, veneers, copper, you say copper. You can use soft metals. I'll tell you with soft metals, um, if you do glue ups, the, I've had failures with soft metals unless they're horizontal across the pen. So meaning like this way and the pen is this way, right? So that way works fine. If you start putting angles or vertical, I haven't had much of any success with those. They tend to blow up on me quite a bit. And it could be that I'm just not as familiar with prepping the metal um, because there is a process that you should go through if you're gonna do that. If you guys are gonna get styrene, get it from Cocoon. Show them a little support for doing the demo for us. Thanks, Jim. No, no more Amazon, right? No more Amazon. <laughs> uh, Jim, they have a question. What tooth blade do you use on the saw? Oh, that's a great question. So, we, we cut a lot of just resin blanks. That's most of what we do. Um, so we don't change the saw blade just for segmenting. And we typically use a uh, Diablo, <coughs> excuse me, 40 tooth combo blade. Is it combo blade or wood blade? Just a, it's a seven and a half inch um, Diablo blade. 
Excuse me. You said you didn't like that smell. I don't. Yeah, if you have any allergies to CA, um, wear a mask. You should probably wear a mask anyway, um, just to keep the fumes away. I know there is a, a CA that's fumeless, is that right, or odorless? Yeah, BSI makes an odorless. It's actually awesome glue, probably the best glue I've ever used, but it is really expensive is the yeah. downside. But it's really great glue. Okay, so we've got these kind of trimmed up. They each have a single layer of styrene on them. Um, we're gonna go back and do the same exact thing on the second uh, color styrene. So let's get this cleaned up. Okay, here we go. Do the, do the chubby wipe again. What's that you said? Yeah, that's what it's good for. <laughs> gotta stay in shape for segmenting. Okay, got a little bit of stuff on there. But, so we're gonna do the same thing. Just put it on here and press. Make sure you get a good solid adhesion. There's um shoot. Sorry guys, I don't multitask well. If you've ever seen me do a, <laughs> a resin stream. If I'm talking while I'm pouring resin, it's not good. Stuff ends up all funky colors. And it's just not good. Okay, so we got those glued up. We're gonna hit them with some accelerator again. Again, away from the table so we don't spray everything else. Get overspray. Okay. I'm just gonna set those aside and we'll do the next set. Another thing that works great if you don't want to use styrene or you want more color variation, I think I said wood veneers earlier, um, guitar pick guard material is awesome to use. It's a different kind of um, I guess fabric or it's a different kind of material. So it's a harder plastic than working with styrene. Styrene's a little soft, but it still machines well. Um, it does tend to burn. If you try to put it on a, on a sander, it'll burn and get a little nasty. But other than that, it looks great. What about knife scale material? Yeah, you can use G10. the G10 yeah. divider or vulcanized paper. It's called fish paper sometimes. Um, we've used that. I haven't had as much success because it's, uh, Chad, are you familiar with that vulcanized paper? Yeah, it's actually really, uh, it's very papery. It's like layers. So the problem with it is, uh, that paper can come apart. So like you can glue up both sides and then it can actually separate in the middle. Yeah. So like with knives, it works because you're putting a pin through it generally. Mm -hmm. And you have like a mechanical fastener on top of the epoxy. Whereas epoxy alone, eventually it would separate in the middle of the paper. Both sides would stay glued on, but you'd, you'd come apart in the paper. Yeah. Okay, so now we got these. Now we're gonna do this whole process again and we're just gonna cut everything out. Okay, we're getting close, guys. So we'll clean these up a little bit. You can see that's pretty clean the way that is, uh, but we're still gonna trim it up. Make sure we get really flat edges.
Um, I don't know what else you could use. I mean, the pit guard probably offers the, the most variation in colors. The, there are segmenting sheets. Do you sell segmenting sheets here? Uh, yeah, we sell a, a laminated one. It's aluminum, styrene aluminum sandwich okay. material. And they're on sale today. Yes, they are on sale. They are on sale. Excellent. Turner's okay. Warehouse. Check it out. Uh, but yeah, yeah, we do have that. And that aluminum, that, that, that um, material is very, very thin. Um, it looks awesome, but it's super easy to work with. It's not like getting a, um, like I hear people talk about, oh, get flashing from Home Depot. That stuff is, is very thick and not easy to work with. At least that's been my experience. But, but don't try to cut it on your saw stop table saw. <laughs> don't well, cut it on your saw stop. On your saw stop. Yes, sir. He's Frank. Yes, sir. You cut them to a quarter of an inch, right? Can you use blanks with uh, pine cones in it and cut it? Sir? Sure. Oh, yeah, cool. absolutely. Um, that wouldn't be cool. You can do it with hybrids. Uh, it'd look cool with, with pine cones. Like you said, something that's uniform throughout would look awesome. I don't know how a, like a wood hybrid cut up would look on it, but pine cones for sure. The alder cones, the mini pine cones look great. Um, the sweet gum pods, if you haven't seen those, they're from the liquid amber tree. Those are great. Just don't step on them before you cast them because it hurts. Do you do things like that? Or sure. You... Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so here we go, guys. We're all cut up. Stack these. We've got everything pretty much prepped for the saw. You can see the like nice clean black and white lines. It's gonna make great accents. Gives it a little bit more high-end look than just a single color, I think. Um, the next thing I would do is I'd go to the table saw and just kind of trim trim up both sides. You don't want to take too much off. So like I said, I'm starting with about an inch. I want to finish with about seven eighths. So the blank is thicker than my final blank is going to be. So I have enough to trim off of that. So I would run it through both sides of the table saw all the way around. And let's imagine I've done that. So I've got six cleaned up pieces. And then I'd come back and you can see this piece is cleaned up. It's got black lines on either side. That's just a Sharpie marker. The reason I do that <clears throat> So when I start building the blank, I know which side should be up. It doesn't matter if it's this side or this side, just one of the, the Sharpie sides. <clears throat> and that's because I don't cut them exactly square. They're a little bit longer or a little bit taller than they are wide. You can see that. I don't know if you see that as an example. And that's just so I don't waste material. Um, so I want it to be taller than wide. Or if you don't mind, I mean, you can, you can make them perfectly square. These are approximately um, a little over 3 quarters, 13 16 wide. That's going to build a blank that's going to finish at about 13 16 wide. Looks just like that. Um, some of the, the tips. So if you're using styrene, and I do this for any material, when you're cutting through the table saw, you want the styrene to be up not down. The reason you do that is if your styrene is down, the, the saw kind of pulls a little bit and you have a slight ridge or a lip on it. And that could cause a little bit of a gap when you try to put your pieces together. If you do that and you're getting ready to build it and you feel a gap, this tool is amazing. It's a um, deburr. Thank you. And you can see just kind of run along the edge. It'll take off the tiniest little spiral um, of material. And now you, you're kind of flushed up again. So this tool is great for um, kind of cleaning those pieces up. So styrene up. Questions? Yes. So um, can you use both colors of styrene together to make a double accent break? Yes. I think if I understand the question. So that's kind of what we've done with this is we've used black and white styrene stacked to, to, to show a, 
I guess a double accent break, if that's what you want to call it. Absolutely. And you can, you, you can, if you wanted to put another, um, like another layer of white on it, or you can, know, you can stack three or as many as you want to. It adds a different, a different variation of it. And then can you go over again what your main chunk of material is? Yes, the main material that I'm using today is a Lumilite Clear Slow that we cast into blocks and then we cut into our segmenting pieces. So that's the, pretty much the only resin we use anymore is Illuminite Clear Slow. Um, we've had a, a tremendous amount of success with it. It works great with hybrids. It works great for just resin, um, whether it's opaque resin or transparent resin. It's just been a, a great product for us. Any other questions? No, we're good? Okay. So styrene face up when you go through a saw, that just saves you a little bit of time. Uh, the glue up process, okay, there's some, some things I've learned about gluing, gluing these things up. So I'm gonna usually use a very flat piece of, this is HDPE wrapped in wax paper. Wax paper just saves me from having to scrape the HDPE when I'm done. Um, make sure that's on a flat board, do it just like this. And what I wanted to share more than anything is when you're gluing this up, you can use all kinds of different glues if you want to. Um, I'm going to use CA exclusively because it's quick, it's reliable if you do it correctly. Um, and you can move on and finish building your blank and your entire pen, you know, within an hour. You don't have to wait overnight. When we glue it together, let's see, which way do we want to go? We'll go. White, black, gray. I'm just gonna put a small bead of glue on one edge. And I wanna explain this before I start gluing because once I start gluing, I, I'm not gonna stop until it's done. Um, small bead of glue is gonna go right on the edge and we're just gonna rub these pieces together and we're gonna hold them there just for a second so they get sticky. The next piece we're gonna put again on the edge and the way we're gonna do it is the styrene pieces are gonna, we'll call it kiss, they're gonna kind of touch each other. I'm gonna slide it in. So you can see the glue would get on this side and it's still on this edge, right? Just like this. I'm gonna pull it out and now I'm gonna push it in. I don't know, it's hard to see, I'm sorry. Um, kind of like that. But the reason I do it that way is you don't want so much glue that it gets goopy and it's squirting out everywhere because then it's going to get on your fingers and it's going to slow you down because you got to stop and clean up. But you want glue on all the contact surfaces. So that's why I'm going to go in styrene to styrene. It's going to kiss and kind of smush the glue out. And then I can push it that way. And it's got glue on both contact surfaces without making a tremendous mess. I'm not going to use any accelerator till the blank is completely done. That's going to prevent getting um, ridges in between those spots where it's squeezed out a little bit, and then you won't get a flat seam there either. Okay, so before I start glowing, any questions? We're good? Okay. Don't mess it up, Jim. Don't mess it up, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> the jinx. Who jinxed me? Damn it, Leon. <laughs> No, we're going to do great, and I'm not going to get any CA on my fingers. You guys are all going to be amazed, and you're going to think it's a magic trick. Okay, here we go. Is she okay? Dad? We good? Okay, it's just a little bit, and this first piece is just kind of almost sacrificial. Why is there a bee on me, Chad? <laughs> he wanted to watch. He did want to watch. Did the wife call and she said, honey. Honey. Love it. Okay, so there's that first squeeze I was talking about. And now we're just gonna hold them together. Make sure they're flat. If you have any dust or debris underneath it, get a little kink in there, it's gonna create a gap, which we don't want gaps. I'll do it again, wipe off any dust. We're gonna go styrene to styrene first, get the squeeze out, and I'll push it back together. As I mentioned earlier, the, 
the glue up goes the fastest because it, you just kind of keep going. As long as you don't stick yourself to yourself, you should be fine. Well, so the squeeze out is what fixes that problem. So you, I don't know if you can see this, but when I push it together, this is a flat surface. Now that flat surface has glue on it. So this flat surface and that flat surface mate, and this has glue on it. So all the points of contact now have glue. And we're gonna cut it, trim enough of the edges off. You don't need glue coming out way over here where there's no, um, where you're gonna get rid of that piece anyway. We're gonna have a few pieces left over. Typically at the size that I'm building right now, it takes 24 to 26 pieces to make um, about a five to five and a half inch blank. Jim, question, would a jig or clamps help to glue up the first piece or is it just not needed? It's not needed at all. The, the CA glue is sticking enough, if you hold it for a second, that it just kind of adheres. And then on top of it, it's also sticking a little bit on the squeeze out to the paper. Um, so it's just not necessary. Look at that. Let's see right here. Oh, that's good. The other thing you want to just, again, as flat as possible. I built them when I first started building these, um, and I didn't really get my pieces right, so they were a little wobbly. I don't know if anybody's ever sent something through a, a table saw that's not flat, but the table saw sends it back, and it's not fun. I mean, that went all the way across the shop. So if it does come out a little bit wobbly because it's not perfectly 90 degrees on all your cuts, not a big deal. Just hit it on the disc sander and um, flatten it out and you should be fine. I forgot to bring raffle tickets. We could have raffled this off, Chad. You got raffle tickets? We do. Nice. Let's give it away. Bless you. Okay, we're just going to keep going until we get to, I don't know, how many pieces did I say? 24? Bless you. Bless you again. So the process works just the same for, um, we're doing just wood. I use CA for wood also. Uh, you can use wood glue, you would need clamps, I mean, it's, or a jig or something that's not fast or convenient, which is hey, why I don't do it. Jim, just to repeat, what were the sizes of those squares that you're putting together? Yeah. Like, what was your finish size after cutting? So the squares that I'm building with right now, they're yeah. approximately seven eighths okay. tall, so this way, and 13 sixteenths wide. I feel like we should have music or something, huh? Since I can't multitask. <laughs> music on in the background. What's that, here? I don't know. No. We can pass this around, too, before it's all done. Everybody can have a look at it, what it kind of looks like. Yeah, sure, you can. Ooh. Don't drop it, Leon. My break. <laughs> that is a drop test, yeah. We, we do that before we send them out. And there's some finished pins up here, too, if y'all want to have a look. You can feel free to pass those around. No, no, not at all. Yeah.
So it, it, it is important to prep. I'll send this one around also. You, I don't know if you can see the mistake there, but there is a mistake in that one. <laughs> is the mistake like when you see those illusion cutting boards and you find the one square the guy put backwards yeah. and didn't notice till it was too late? <laughs> Yeah, you can kind of see. I don't know, can you guys point that out? On that one right there, you can see I put one upside down, so it's got four pieces of styrene, and then none right there. Yeah, that happens. So it is important to kind of prep your your pieces so you know which direction you're going with them. It'll just save you some headache from having to start over. The fortunate thing is I did that at one end. The, the top end, so I had still had enough to cut off for a uh, for a junior set that worked out pretty good. Okay, so is junior your favorite pen to put these on? It is. We've done um, some, not necessarily four herring bones, but. Kit list isn't even fun to make. Um, what I tell you about segmented blanks for kit list, you definitely want to sleeve them because by the time they're turned down, the joint that's glued together is so thin. If you bump them or drop them, they're going to fall apart. They could fall. They may not. They could. So if you sleeve them or put a uh, tube through them, now they're glued on their butts, but they're also glued all the way around, which is going to hold it together. Okay. So now this is ready. And we're going to spray it. Hopefully it just kind of peels off like this. And we'll spray the bottom. Just give it a quick second, wipe it down. You can kind of see this is still pretty flat, which is perfect. That's how we want it. I'm going to run it through the saw. The easiest way i found, unless you, you do a few of them, you kind of know what measurements to go away from the saw, um, is just kind of put your, push your, here, I'll do it this way, push your fence up to it till it rides slightly over the saw and you can kind of see through these gaps on where it's going to cut and then flip it and do the same thing. But you definitely want to get as close as you can to making the, um, you know, the center of the pattern stay in the center and not get lopsided because it doesn't look great once it's turned. Awesome. So that is it. That's how you build a segmented blank um, for a herringbone pattern. Oh, here you go. Thanks. You still see some of the, the market, market lines on there. And we'll just pass that around and open it up to see if anybody has any other questions. Yeah, any questions in the room? Nice. Thank you. Do you have any glue on your fingers? No. No, I don't know. Let me look. <laughs> look, no glue. I'm glue free on my fingertips. Success. Success. If you're ever not sure, you just spray your fingers with accelerator and then you'll know if you have Yeah. Yeah. Uh, quick, quick tip though, if you do glue yourself, it's going to happen. Um, don't panic, number one. Number two is if you're not wearing gloves, be sure that you don't pull your finger off. You want to roll your finger off. Uh, do that sooner than later. Um, if you're really stuck, get some acetone or some nail remover or something. And, you know, it ruins the blank, but. Jim, a couple questions. Um, Yes. When you go to turn that blank, how do you square the ends? What do you use? Okay, that's a great question. So first things first is I would square, I don't know if you can see this. This side is square. That's, I take it to the table saw. And that's another reason you want it to be a little bit uniform is so that when you set it down that way, you don't get a ton of rock. Um, and then I just use a miter gauge and face it off initially. Mm -hmm. Once a blank is square like this, then it's treated like any other blank. I'll, I'll drill it 
I use a, a sanding jig to space it up to the tube and it turns just like anything else. Don't be, if you're gonna build them though, don't be afraid to turn them. Some people get a little weird about it and then they turn their speed down and, and like they just don't wanna blow them up. That's the worst thing you can do. You gotta turn it up as fast as your, your lathe is gonna go. Unless you have some turbo jet lathe, somebody, I told them turn it as fast as you go and they're like, mine goes 15 million RPM. <laughs> like, okay, not that fast, but you know, like 3,500 um, something. You wanna be fast and sharp tools and just give it a shot like you would any other resin blank. Don't be afraid of it. And then one other question, uh, finishing. Since you have the styrene in there, mm -hmm. how do you finish it? CA. Cool. CA finish? Yeah, CA finish. And especially if you're doing like a mixed medium. So if you do wood and, and resin, um, one material is usually softer than the other. So you're gonna feel the segments. Mm -hmm. It's good to put CA over it, not only to help it hold together, but to kind of get a smoother finish. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Smart, smart. Any other questions Perfect. in the room? Do you use high speed or uh, negative rate? Carbide? Um, carbide? Yeah, I've used both. M mostly carbide. Okay. Um, I usually finish with a skew myself, but I've used negative rakes also. Yeah. Excellent. All Leon right. uses ne carbides. Oh, how do you use CA to finish it? So um, if you're not used to doing a CA finish on the lathe, then there's some great YouTube videos, but we would apply it just like okay. you would. Um, Chad, yeah. yeah, Chad's put, got a good one. Oh yeah, we've got some videos on our channel. You could watch how to do a CA finish. Okay. You probably want to practice a few before you do it on one of these. <laughs> practice on some wood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, awesome. So you should do it on, on the lathe, kind of slow speed. Could you use magic wood? To polish you could, yeah. But you still feel the, the segments unless you have a CA finish. Okay. Yeah. All right, Jim, everyone's saying thanks online. You made awesome. it Awesome, thank easy. you so much. If you guys go home and do this, it will not go that smoothly. The yes, first it time, will. So. Yes, it will. So just know that he made it look easy. Cocoon blanks, if you want to get styrene, support these guys. If you want to get blanks, I say just buy the blanks. Don't even mess with making them, right? Sure. These look great. <laughs> Thanks, uh, cocoon Seth. blanks on Instagram and cocoonblanks.com. If you have any other questions, you guys can reach out to them. Thanks, awesome. Jim. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yay. All right. Uh -huh. Next demo. Next demo is at what time, Amy? Uh, two o'clock. Two o'clock. Uh, if you guys are here, I forgot to mention this earlier. We do have everything that you've been seeing in the demos and in the next demo on sale this week because we were like, why not? That's like perfect opportunity. So it's on the homepage of the website or if you guys want a flyer, I have them in here. But two o'clock, so we got a little bit to chill out and you guys can talk to these guys. They brought blanks and everything. Oh, and we'll do that right